There, beloved essential pioneers and welcome to this video with me where I will discuss the topic of self empathy versus self mastery so a lot of us have been through immense cycles of growth and expansion and a lot of this came through the reflection of other people and serving other people and how to be in conscious relationships but also the people we meet day by day day to day so recently I was <laughs> shown about this um, upgrade that a lot of us are moving through because a lot of people were associating with the label of being an empath and I talked about this topic quite a while ago I made this video which has a lot of views on YouTube it's about um, being an empath and mastering our empathy so today I wish to elevate this further and talk about um, something that I call cosmic empathy so how is that different to being an empath and you know people often relate this to feeling the feelings of others almost to the degree that we feel they're our own. And up until this point, there's a lot of Ascension Pioneers who've been feeling that these feelings are for them to deal with, for them to, clean, to cleanse, to purge, and all that we did have a galactic assignment and this video won't resonate with all of you <laughs> but it's not the case for everyone because there's uh, a first ascending wave so those beings who are moving into ascension for the first time and there's also those who are volunteer souls who've done this before who are here to show the way for others so recently I've had this situation in my own life how I was shown this new emotional mastery this new uh, empathic compassion and mastery because empathy is actually a lower octave of compassion and there's even many octaves of how we perceive ourselves to be compassionate for example right I'm gonna give you this one short example recently someone accused me of you know they just made an assumption by watching my videos they said that I'm wearing fur and that I'm using feathers for my art and I was like what I've never wore a fur in my life if there's something fuzzy it's all artificial and synthetic and you know we all use uh, feathers a lot of us in our art because we just find them on the floor and things like that so there was a lot of judgment coming through that email and it made me think because we you know I was being accused of what kind of vegan are you right <laughs> and I wasn't even asked this as a question and someone asking you know can you explain you know I thought this was this and that can you you know further elaborate it's when we have this false perception and all that we see is this problem in the world and judgment and that's all we will see we will filter our eyes through um, we won't really have the ability to grow into this higher octave of compassion so what I was shown after reading that email was that there's a lot of people who call themselves vegans and yogis and you know all the kind of names um, and they practice animal rights and compassion but the thing is we're not compassionate for our fellow humans who are maybe still eating meat who are um, not having the knowledge we're having maybe they don't want it or they're not ready for it yet but there was a lot of manipulation that made humans the way they are and without knowledge please don't make such assumption about the world because you're not really practicing true compassion so our higher level of compassion means that we don't have compassion just for what we think is righteous in the world but for that which is as it needs to be for all forms evolving in their own time and space because a lot of humans they don't have the knowledge of how they were manipulated into the reptilian programs <laughs> the reptilian brain that tells them certain things and how the human genome was filtered down up until the point of being only two stranded DNA instead of the basic original 12. So without this knowledge and why this is so and why certain humans are this way, please don't judge them and please don't make assumptions about the world because we're not being compassionate that way. We're saying we're compassionate to animals or how dare you and then again we judge the fellow human. So how dare you, how you know what say you is this judgmental perspective that does not make us see all life as evolving as an equal even that which was totally um, divided from its true original nature which is uh, the case with a lot of genetic manipulations that occurred thousands of years ago after the fall of Atlantis on this earth so 
please don't make these assumptions and watch yourself where you're being judgmental because that's not leading you to a higher compassion. That's the first thing Spirit really wanted me to talk about because in this awakening movement, there's a lot of talking about the animals and the animal rights and the environment. Yes, I'm all for it. <laughs> but I'm saying it shouldn't come at the expense of judging fellow humans who are still doing these things because a lot of them, they've lost the knowledge and they're totally genetically filtered into this box that makes them survival mode only and a lot of humans at this point they're not capable in their physical body to make such a drastic shift that will make them absorb so much light as we are so we're supposed to be role models and compassionate observers and um, you know way showers not judgmental poking into finger pointing beings that that's not truly a light being I'm sorry so spirit really wanted me to to reiterate that today because a lot of beings who are talking about compassion, there's just comes with more judgment. So watch yourself because the moment we do that, we're not going to grow into a higher evolved states of being and a higher octave. So that's the first thing. So let's move on to this cosmic empathy. So what does this mean? This will resonate especially for those of you who are volunteer souls, right? And this will feel in your heart because you've come here, you did not need to be here, but you've come here to pave the way to do things first. And I have a beautiful article. That was one of my first articles called Ascension Pioneers and Who Are We? And uh, I'm in the transition mode of recreating a new web page where this will be more, you know, <laughs> visible and more easily accessible. So what I want to say here is that a lot of these beings, uh, they were associating with the word empathy and they were saying, I'm an empath, you know, I can feel feelings of others. And as they were engaging with the human life and the human life forms, a lot of times we, all of us, have been taking upon the responsibilities of others. We've been almost feeling like the sense of, oh, it's so easy for us. Let us take the, their cares and burdens and then let us heal them. <laughs> let them heal, let us heal them because we've had almost like this distorted belief about self-sacrifice that comes from even from the Bible saying that Jesus you know <laughs> he died for other people's sins which was a total, total manipulation that wasn't his mission at all his mission was to show physical resurrection which is the, the living footsteps we're living now and uh, we distorted this up until the point that still a lot of people think that being of help and of assistance means that you have to carry the burden so with empathy a lot of times it came this filter that made us so heartfelt and so wanting to help and be everywhere for everyone that a lot of times we've forgotten about ourselves which made us not that abundant it made us stop our path sometimes to be helping someone else on their path and what cosmic mastery and the cosmic empathy truly means that you're helping from the higher perspective so for those of you who are volunteer souls I've just recently through my own experience when I did my everything when I poured my heart out to someone and showed them the truth about how it is and what's the matrix and how they're being infiltrated in it and how they're rooted in this and through these negative patterns and basically when we give others the gift of truth then we will see where they are and a lot of them are not there yet they're just not there yet and sometimes if you're able and we're all able <laughs> to kind of talk to people's souls and I said please you know <laughs> take that burden I want to have it like a burden talk to them and wake them up and the soul was like no <laughs> because the soul knows it's divine timing but what we sometimes do we convince ourselves that we're just trying to help and then we get slapped in the face and it's really not helping because we're trying to force something that maybe it's not it's divine timing yet because there's many different ways as ascension pioneers how we serve for for beings who are not there yet, we can only see them. That means energetically to transfer the codes of light into them. So when it's time for them, they will evolve. They will kind of sprout in their own time. We can guide them, can support them, or we can just have that mutual reception and receptivity, which is often the case of those who are kind of at our level, if you know what I mean. So it's very easy, it's in flow. and basically these three main levels that I'm being shown so for the first level which is the beings who are not there yet and we often want to so badly help and wake them up and people do that a lot why because we feel that where they are is not good enough and just recently I found a very good video called the spiritual elitism from oh I forget the lady's name um, I think she's doing the Niberian Council channeling, I don't know, <laughs> Jalela Star, yeah. And she was talking about this, how sometimes we, when we kind of, with our awareness, need to descend, bring it back to Earth and serve, because that's what we're doing as star seeds and beings of light. Um, that's what we're here for. She said, sometimes we can be almost like this, that's lower than me, or that's not good enough, and that's not ascending, right? 
And that's not really going to make us grow and expand. It will make us stuck in this rigid mode of this comparison and thinking that where they are is not good enough instead of seeing things through the bigger picture, which I call the cosmic empathy, which, which makes you work with people from the awareness of assistance that they need. So you're connected to their soul and the soul shows you how you can work with them. And with a lot of cases, you can only do that in dream time, which is the higher self to higher self conversation. And I have a lot of these conversations after having these relationships with people. And I'm being shown that, I, you know, sometimes we as a human mind does not understand. And we're thinking, are we still in a relationship? Basically, we are because we're multi-layered beings. We're multifaceted. We're multidimensional. And our work of light, of assistance, is occurring on so many levels. But we as humans, sometimes if we kind of put it in a box and we think we need to do it that way instead of doing the higher calling mode. And when you're not following that, you're going to get a slap in the face, which means either the person will start resisting you or something will happen, it, it just won't be in flow. So when you're doing your work perfectly in alignment with the soul's needs and desires, it will be in flow. And like I said, for a lot of us, we can only assist higher self to higher self and we do that and if that happens and if you're having dreams say okay thank you thank you for being of service that way and all that we can truly do is express constant gratitude for the gifts and superpowers that we have and through many of these exchanges and not all of them will be beautiful and blissful of course we are meeting more of ourselves so that we can show others more of these aspects so when they're ready to sprout it will happen so what I was shown is that this need for this empathy to take the responsibilities of others is actually keeping them stuck and lazy because they're thinking, oh, you're willing to do my work, thank you, here's more, right? And that's how people mostly are. And then people are complaining, those who are saying and that they're light workers and they're complaining or they're blaming others, but actually it's us who are encouraging those kind of behaviors. So if you're really wanting to be the ambassadors of the new, the stewards of the new earth and the home luminous, like I like to call us, essential pioneers, beings of light and of divine remembrance and our embodiment, the spirit meeting our matter, being truly horizontally, vertically one in unison. It's actually a responsibility because we do know. And when you meet someone who does not want the knowledge and they're clearly not respecting you for giving it to them or handing them out, then don't give it anymore. Take it to someone who does want it, who does respect it, who will say, yes, please give me more. Thank you. Because when there's a level of divine recipro um, reciprocation and respect and integrity and they will be in flow, that's when you're doing your work beautifully. When there will be kind of entanglements or people will kind of not accept you, you will see that maybe there's another <laughs> approach needed at hand then please meditate on that because uh, the soul will show you what's needed of you and sometimes our ego would want to do something because sometimes let's say you like someone so much and you want to continue to be in their company but your soul's higher assistance would come and it would tell you please walk away because you're actually helping them more by you know dissolving the cords through which they're constantly feeding off of you and thinking you're their pathway to growth and not doing their own work and not going through their own experiences and a lot of people think that saving and rescuing and helping someone within the light is walking their path for them and we cannot do that although sometimes we would love to because we know how when we mastered through our own initiations and sometimes even troubles in our life and people don't think we're not struggling. Yes, we had to struggle. I had to struggle too. It might look perfect in the mountains and all beautiful, but that's not the, the whole reality you're seeing here. In just the video, there's so much. I mean, sometimes I, I do work, it, it's a nonstop. It's, it's in dream time, it's when you wake up. It's, it's so much energetic work with so many beings. That's what volunteer souls do. It's 24 seven. We don't just assign eight hours a work day, a job at a job, and then we go home and do our own thing. It's a constant. And sometimes this, this drains us and it's tiresome, but we do it because we do it out of love, except when the human mind misinterprets our um, actions and our capabilities. So the cosmic empathy is kind of where a lot of us is right now, which means that we're outgrowing this tendency to feel other people's feelings because when you let's face it <laughs> with your enormous heart and the capacity to feel you know to feel on so many layers that most people cannot even tap into at this moment where they are what you're actually doing is you are loving and that in itself is enough just loving them but when you want to do extra 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 <laughs> and then you're complaining it's it's a misservice to you yes it is but not just to you to them too because we're supporting the um, they're thinking like, oh, whatever I do is fine. So I don't need to respect, you know, I don't need to show gratitude. I can do whatever and I get away with it. 
it's kind of like we become and we create what we teach so that's what we're teaching them it's the same with our children our physical children so in a way humans that are ascending for the first time and not everyone is choosing it yet it's a time lapse you know everyone is on their timeline so let's be patient ascension is not a goal that if you don't achieve it this year you're never going to have it <laughs> just be patient with the people and we're here to do that work but i'm being shown more and more mastery on that level in my own experience in my own path um how I assist people and a lot of times it's just a certain pathway you're meant to walk with them and then you need to leave and a part of you the human mind is like oh I don't want to leave them it's so good these aspects are good and then you're weighing it you know with with these things you got to take the spirit initiate you got to take the higher road and the higher road might be leave that person alone let them come to you um, when they come to us it needs to be through humility if someone has hurt you by you being really loving the light and maybe you're the only light they'll ever see and the, the only light in their life I I know many people who uh, I was in their life that in that scenario and they didn't they didn't even see it some somehow deep down they felt it I felt that they did but they weren't consciously acknowledging and they weren't reciprocating and acknowledging you because they're not there yet that's it and we're not supposed to judge them because we're doing these things for them that's what we get so if that is the case like I said they, they still need to kind of have that respect so if they're not giving it it's our time as cosmic empaths not just oh I'm an empath I want to feel for them and people are saying oh you know these twin flames and these journeys I'll oh, send them love sending my twin flame love is like what it's like <laughs> it's weird it's really weird because without a higher understanding and knowledge that everyone needs to come to their own sovereignty otherwise there is no personal ascension no one can ascend for you and being just empathic in terms of feeling the feelings of others and wanting to be there for everyone is not gonna really make it happen <laughs> and that's still uh, distorted because it makes you feel separate from the paths maybe others are choosing and if someone is choosing not to ascend at this time it's perfectly fine and you're saying why was I with them anyway because I sometimes you know my my doubtful mind was asking these questions and I was like hmm was my time and energy investment in vain did I even do anything that was always my worst doubt I had to deal with it in my life and then I had to develop such pure trust that whatever I put in this um, as an energy investment is has been planting seeds which will become sprouts in their own time and maybe we're not going to witness it the way we expect it as humans but if we truly love for the sake of love of the soul because so few people are are willing and are even capable of loving on a soul level they want to love to their physical senses and what their ego wants of someone but if you truly truly love someone you would do the right thing for them not just for you because you're thinking oh I want company but they're not as they are but maybe they should be this way so I'm just gonna do it halfway um, sometimes it's best to like I said to leave it at that and to truly listen to the heart and if the heart says leave it and you're thinking oh am I being a bad person for that no because you're actually letting them have their own choices and live them out because you know someone can tell you whatever they want but still you needed to have your own experience so you could be like aha that's why it needs to come from us and it's the same goes for everyone ascension cannot be cheated into it's not something you can have a cheat sheet on your a test and you're just gonna pass it. it it doesn't work this way it's a certain mechanic it's an organic process that you have to trigger it within you and your own soul needs to start to awaken you so if someone is not there yet the only thing you can do what you're doing is you're actually planting seeds you're planting the energetic seeds and a lot of times when I'm with someone or I was with someone I was being even said I came it was like you're seeding them and I'm like what and at first I didn't know what it means but I remembered just recently through this example in my own life I was taken back to the sentence that I read in the book from Dolores Cannon which said that those of us who are here volunteering I think it was in the volunteer souls a book I don't know three waves of volunteers I think but I'm not sure because others had this knowledge too so the being said you know we're actually here for those who are in between the choosing in between whether they'll choose the shift or not we're here for those because those that are organically shifting on their own it's very easy you know for those of you who are getting what I'm saying in the videos you're already there you know you just have confirmations 
and uh, you're getting um, like your own information and it helps you to move along much easier but there's those who don't have it that easy who are, first of all they might not be choosing it yet second of all a lot of people are very torn between different realities because let's face it if they do accept what's been happening within the matrix and how they were manipulated some of them even in their own families their whole world would kind of it would kind of dissolve right in front of their eyes and a lot of them are not willing to take that risk because they're not ready yet to make the steps to liberate themselves so quickly and so passionately and in such a short time they're not ready they want to do other things before and we have to acknowledge that so if you come into contact with someone and you feel oh I wanted to so badly assist them or I was shown that I assist them but it's not the way I thought it was gonna be then it's your mind trust that you did your own thing the best way you could and when you give your all and still you get a slap in your face and at least you know I've, I've done the best I could I've put my all I put I poured my heart out and don't worry because maybe a few years from now the person will be like ah oh, when it's their time and their soul starts to wake them up they'll get like one epiphany after the other I have goosebumps when I'm saying this because it's true and they will just kind of it will help them to add up things together quicker and faster and that's why we're here because energetically through higher self work where we can be there for so many people simultaneously we're multi-dimensional when I work with people and a lot of them have me as a guide in their dreams that's my higher aspects working with them but me here in the physical body I still have needs I still need money for support that I can live in these beautiful Alps <laughs> that I can pay my bills buy my food um, this is my physical temple this is my physical self and it can do its best as it can but it it cannot be misrespected, disrespected. It cannot be um, denied. Some people are just not listening and therefore they're not respecting you because they're not yet knowing how to respect themselves. Some of them don't even know who they are yet. <laughs> they are living such a confused life, they don't know. And it's not meant to make us doubt ourselves and our own abilities. In fact, it's, make us, it's supposed to make us feel even better about our superpowers because through each and every one of those um, relationship entanglements, we're learning more about ourselves and how can we be of service more? How can we be more intact? Um, recently, I've discovered a lot through my sessions with people and these are much different than physical <laughs> meetings with these humans are not there yet. And, um, it's just a different exchange and for a while now I was struggling with sessions because I thought they need to be a certain way or what am I doing or supposed to do it right or it's supposed to have a certain module and then I just surrendered more and more and then I realized the only reason why in the beginning I still struggled with, with my sessions was because I didn't see yet my gift and how I do it and through the work that I allowed myself to be in my space I realized that my biggest gift is that I can tune into a person, I can tune into their truest, highest self and I just mirror and reflect that back to them and that's why most of them are so profoundly shifted even in the course of one session or the next day and I get this profound insights from them and they start falling in love back to themselves and their life because they're finally feeling how it is to meet the self, how it is to meet the real self and certain people like I said they're not yet ready and they will be in denial They'll kind of do everything to push you away, to push the knowledge away. They don't want it. Well, then don't give it. Because the knowledge, when given to the wrong people at the wrong time, it doesn't do any good. Um, just love. These people are just, um, they're just needing to be loved and having compassion for them. And that means soul love. <laughs> and a lot of people are using this empathy as an excuse, even. It can come in extreme cases as well, to say, oh... I'm doing this work for others to kind of like put them up on a pedestal to make ourselves feel better because we're empaths. Come on, that's not what volunteering here on this planet is all about. It's about assisting the shift. And it's not just the human shift, that's a part of it, but it's all life here. It's all life in creation that's moving an octave higher or many octaves to be, to be honest. Um, but it really takes guts and courage and discipline, self-discipline and focus to look into every aspect of our service because our service needs to continuously improve. I remember years back someone did my main chart and my main life question was how can I improve my service? He said that's your main question in life. I'm like that's exactly what I've been dealing with my whole life every single time. What can I do to even improve it? How can I be better at this? And even every single person coming your way does improve you. They enhance you. They lift you up because you discover an aspect of you like our blind spots are becoming our superpowers now. And we're becoming such a clear channel and mirror for people that 
they will only get their own reflections, whether they will be pure and divine and beautiful, or they will be, if they're full of projection and uh, um, filtering, that's what they're going to get. But it's not about us. We have to learn to say, look, I trigger that, not mine. Deal with it. It's your own. <laughs> and for some of the people we deal with, that's the only contact we're going to engage with. But with others, we're going to also co-create something better. Like I said, please, when you do any kind of work with people, um, try to notice how the energy dynamics is playing out. If it's more like the other person's not ready, you're probably just feeding them. <laughs> If they are open, they are listening, they're asking curiosity questions, but they don't want to shift so much, maybe you're just putting kind of, you know, like initial guidance steps and kind of like mothering them in a bit. But we're not meant to mother them, you know, like, oh, we're babies, you can do it on your own. I meant mothering in a beautiful, nurturing way when we see everyone as our extensions because the child is an extension of us, you know. So that's what I mean when I say that. Um, or, like I said, with some, it's beautiful mutual exchange and the energy just flows. And it's with some beings, you can just come into contact, the energy exchanges, it ripples out. You don't need even much words. It's just serving each other through constant self recognition and acceptance and allowance. So there's different levels, and we have to know that it's perfect. But us engaging and saying this is our responsibility, then they will never learn their own responsibilities because ascension does come with responsibilities to grow, to mature in a soul level. And some beings are doing it beautifully, some beings are still stubborn, they're not willing to, but hey, we have to have compassion for all. And by doing that, those of you who've done this shift, you will notice that your empathy is turning more into this cosmic empathy, which is more like this mastery. I call it cosmic mastery because you will see things from a bigger perspective. You will see a much bigger picture playing out than a lot of people do. You're going to see things that others don't see. You're going to develop your gift of farsightedness. And I have this, and sometimes I say things in a funny, humorous way, and they end up coming true, and I'm like, what the heck? It's because, you know, like it's the laughing Buddha concept. I always see it because the most enlightened beings are actually just in that laughter and playfulness. And sometimes when we're in that mode, then I can feel that element essence when I'm in nature. I just say things that I don't know at that time. They're channeled and they, they end up coming true. And these are the aspects of us that, that see everything from this uh, far-sighted, uh, grander perspective. And it's beautiful. And we don't have to get so entangled in the human emotion. And that's what makes us grow into our cosmic mastery. So I wanted to share this with you today. No channeling and no singing today because I <laughs> have to go and have some time for myself too. But I really wanted to take this out as an expanded topic of something I already talked about. I think it was last year, maybe two years ago, about um, mastering our uh, empathy. So taking this further and how with this mastered empathy we can be of assistance to others. Because with a lot of Ascension Pioneers it's hard. They're struggling with where they are in these boundaries and where another, other people begin. But again, that's not the same as that I said spiritual elitism. And you're saying like, hmm, I'm so much more than others now that I'm ascending. No way. <laughs> that's not true. And we're still going to be in contact with people even those that are not yet choosing Ascension. Because like I said with certain people they need seating and that will happen. You will just naturally be guided and your soul will know what to do. Um, and it's just how it is. <laughs> we just have to go with what is and our souls know what they're doing and we have to start trusting that and we do. So thank you for watching, thank you for sharing and for donating, supporting <laughs> and uh, I love you all so much as always. Please take a look into my courses, they're beautiful or you know, schedule a session with me because I'm having so much fun with these sessions now that I've really activated this, the knowing of how I assist people and it's really brilliant how it's playing out. And I love you all so much. I hope you're enjoying yourselves and your beautiful development of cosmic mastery. So thank you and I'll see you again very soon with so much love, wisdom and power. Bye bye.